hello everyone, ocean people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Maria and this is CN Me. And today I want to tell you a story. This story is about that time when I lived in a desert island for two months and survived. It's not so dramatic. For those of you who are new to the channel, I did my master's degree in marine ecology. At some point I had to choose the theme for my master thesis. And I wanted some adventure in my master thesis. So I talked to a couple of professors looking for a cool master to topic with adventure in it. At some point I talked to my then su future supervisor who asked me if I would be interested in studying baby seabirds on a 2.83 square kilometer island with no phone connection, no internet, no access to any kind of any civilization whatsoever. And of course, as any other person would say or in their sane mind, my answer was Hell yeah! Oh boy, was I in for a treat. It did have a post box though. That was kind of sold me out. So there you go. In the summer of 2012, Moi Maria went to a deserted island in the middle of the Atlantic for two months. I packed everything I needed, including my mini Wilsons. Thank you very much, friends. I knew you thought I would be lonely, and Wilsons is definitely what I needed to keep me company. The only connection there was to the outside world, besides the every three month boat that came to bring new people and take other people away, was a Oh, oops, was a satellite phone which was only used for emergencies. My hell of a brick of a satellite phone which was like that size or something and with an antenna I had the feeling this size, which only worked on the top of the island sometimes because sometimes it didn't work at all. And back and I think like an SMS was like one euro and a call was like five euros per minute. Before going any further, a little background on the island. Salvagens Grand Island, which was the island where I went, is part of a Portuguese archipelago called the Salvagens Archipelago. In 1971 these islands were made a natural reserve due to the fact that there are very important nesting sites for a site for several seabirds, namely the Bulwars Petrel, which was the one I was studying, the White-Faced Storm Petrel, the North Atlantic Little Shearwater, the Medeiran Storm Petrel, the Yellow-Legged Gull, the Rosette Tern, and the Berthelot's Pipit, which is actually not a seabird. And of course, the most numerous and noisy of all of them, the Quarry Shearwater. <laughs> Also, they were kind of cool. Look at this gangster chick. Yeah. And now if you don't think that these are some of the cutest things you've ever seen, you have no soul. <sighs> Sorry to tell you that. Besides these birds, other species worth mentioning that lived in this island were the most famous and only dog in the island and also my great companion throughout my two months in this island, Selvagin the dog. The endemic Selvagin is wall gecko and the Medeiran wall lizard. They were like tiny Godzillas. Godzillas, I tell you, they come for you. The main goal of my thesis was to understand how the lunar cycle influenced the behavior of the Bulwars Petrel's parents for since the chick was born or hatched until they left the nest. These birds spend most of their lives in the sea and every year they come to these colonies to lay their eggs and they stay in these colonies until, until the chicks fly away and this lasts well between three to four months. They normally lay their eggs in June and the chicks can leave up to early October, end of September, uh, beginning of October. After the baby bird hatches, the parents stay a couple of days in the nest and then after those couple of days they go out into the ocean, both of them, to find food to then during the night, on some nights, come back and give the baby the food. They regurgitate it into the baby. Don't know if you wanted to know that. It's nature. I monitored these babies. I had a hundred nests I had to monitor every day and I monitored their weight and their size. Basically I wanted to see if this, the, the lunar cycle or the moon phase would influence the weight uh, or the weight gain of the chicks throughout my study period. Which I found that actually it did. On nights when the moon was brighter they gained less weight than on nights when there was practically no moon. It might be because one reason, the parents have harder times finding food during lunar moonlight, so even if they come back to the nest, it might be that they just bring less food, or it also might be that they just don't come to the nest when the, the moonlight is brighter, because this increases their 
probability of the parents being predated by seagulls. For this I had 100 nests uh, uh, all spread out throughout the island that I had to monitor every day. Here is what a nest looks like, by the way. And here is how I look like trying to find the chick. Glamorous. Now let me explain how things actually work on this island. So there are three, let's say, buildings on this island. One house, which is the one that always has people in it. Another house, which I'm not sure it belongs to this one guy, but I didn't see him there all the time I was there. And this other house on the top of the island, which is basically just a storage house or, well, a tiny thing. Because of politics and stuff, there always have to be two people on this island at the same time. And normally throughout the years, this is the function of the nature guard. So there are always two of them on this island, and every three weeks they change. So every three weeks, the boat that brought them comes back with new nature guards and brings the ones which were there the previous three weeks back to the main island. However, during the summer months, normally there are a lot of scientists going there to study normally the seabirds and lizards. The only way of reaching this island is by boat or by helicopter in case of emergencies, and in my case the trip from the main island, the Madeira Island, which is the big island, until this island took around, I think, 21 hours. Life in the island is more or less the same every day. I would wake up very early every day, I would go up until the top of the island, where all most of the nests were, and I would start my work. Then I would finish my work around lunchtime, time in which I would come back down. Lunch would be normally prepared by the nature guards, because if there's one thing they know how to do is to cook. Have lunch, and then if it would be necessary, which normally was, if other scientists had other jobs to do that required help, we would go back to the top of the island and do whatever was needed. After this was done, we would come back, normally go for a snorkel or a dip in front of the house in this bay, which had amazing marine life back then. Unfortunately, I didn't have an underwater camera. Then we would have dinner, and afterwards do whatever you please. Read, work... There was a TV, yeah, Portuguese, with Portuguese channels, so sometimes watch TV. And that was basically it. Or watch series. FYI, if you are thinking of going to a deserted island where you cannot escape from the people who are there, or escape from anything that is there, and which also has really creepy bird noises at night, please don't watch horror series or movies. I don't know what came into me because I never watched series, the horror series or movies. For some reason I thought it would be cool to do it on that particular moment. It was a very bad idea. Additionally, there were also some days that we would have to go back to the top of the island to work for, on things that you could only do at night. There was no light and we only had like this little lantern and go or... Uh, and. It was kind of an adventure. I felt like badass. Even though there was nothing that could, could go wrong, the worst thing that could happen is that you fall off a cliff, which was kind of difficult if you went always on the same path. But anyways, you felt like a badass because you're like totally dark and just with a... It was cool. It was cool. Also, occasionally we would have some visitors, just sailing boats passing by. People would want to, would come to the island, have some barbecues with us, and uh, it was quite nice as well to see new faces. Believe me, you start thinking that new faces is something that you once heard of in a dream, and that they actually do not exist anymore. It's uh, not to say anything about against the people I was there with. They were all nice, but it, it's just after some time, you like. You, you understand, there's one house where everyone is, there's one kitchen, there's just one place where you are for all the time, you cannot escape. So yeah, you also have to kind of learn how to deal with people. So, after all this, what can I say about this experience generally? It was incredible. So I have to admit that what, before I went, I was kind of afraid of the no communication with the outside thing, especially because I had just started a relationship with my current boyfriend, who's here, so it worked anyways. But I, it, it was surprisingly really relaxing, the fact that you don't, you're not communicating with anyone and you don't have to worry that you have to communicate with anyone because you can't. So it's just a very peaceful, relaxing and zen experience. Also, it was an honor to be able to be in such a pristine environment, which, well, there is nowhere in the world anymore that is 100% untouched by humans or human activity. However, if there is an island where you can live in, which is kind of pristine, this is probably the closest, it get, the closest that you can get. There was a lot of 
being with yourself, enjoying the present moment, going into the ocean, the simple things, enjoying the simple things in life, good food, the company. And it, I know this sounds really cliche, but it was true. I really enjoyed this experience. And uh, I, it was a bit of a challenge in the beginning. Prior going, I was like, oh my god, two months is so much. How am I going to survive without my phone? How am I going to survive without internet? It's going to be so boring. The incredible thing is it wasn't. It wasn't boring. Somehow it was really cool. I don't look back and I don't remember thinking, oh my god, I'm so bored. No, I remember, don't take me wrong, I was really happy to come back after the two months because you do need after some time a bit of socialization with other people as well and uh, I also am someone who's kind of active and I always like to do different things. I don't, I'm not someone who likes routine generally, so this was maybe the worst part for me is that there was always this routine, but besides that it was quite cool and I really enjoyed being there even though I was really happy to come back as well. The funny thing is before my master thesis is I never really liked or not really liked I didn't have anything against them but I didn't have any special interest for birds or seabirds or anything and now I just love these cuties I love them especially the babies oh my god they were so cute I had some kind of connection with them already I mean I was checking on them every single day it was was kind of a Thing. Is that weird? Is it? Also I learned a lot about myself on how I would, how I am in certain situations that are kind of unconventional, especially regarding to dealing with other people in this very unconventional, uh, unconventional environment. It's a place where you cannot run away from your problems if you have one. So this was also quite enlightening and it was a very growing up experience for me at the time. So it, it was enriching, it, it helped me grow as a person and as a scientist and uh, it was amazing. And yeah, my Wilsons were always with me. Yeah, that's a fact. I took, I was going crazy with the Wilsons. So no, it was not because I was bored. It might look like so. I am just a crazy person. <laughs> if you are interested in checking a very nice segment on these islands done by National Geographic, Please check out, I put, will put it in the description box below. Check it out, I really, really recommend it. If you don't want to see the full 20 minutes version, I will also link the trailer to this, and it also shows you some snaps of the island, that, and you can also have some idea of how the island looks like, and how it is, and everything. Yeah, so ocean people, this was it. This was the telling of my adventure. Um, if you have any more questions, write them down in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions, write them down in the comment section below. And uh, otherwise, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos about marine stuff. And um, I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video. Toodies! Bye!